that company, um, MZ Chef, I guess they call it, that sent me out that pasta maker a while ago, contacted me uh, just a little while ago, and asked if I'd like to try one of their um, meat grinders made for the KitchenAid mixer. And uh, we really love that pasta maker. It works good. So I said, sure, I'll try it. I'll make a video about it. So here it is unpacking it. Um, arrived in a nice small box here. Now we do have that big old meat grinder that we use. But that's really a pain to get out and carry up. And we have to keep it in the basement because we have no place to keep it. And my wife thought this would be a you know really good option for the mixer. And uh, not take up a lot of storage space. So you know this is how it comes. It comes with a uh, hamburger press also. And in this video I found a recipe online for a maple chicken breakfast sausage that I'm going to try making with it. So, um, you know, if you stick with me, you'll, you'll see what I wound up with. But basically, it all comes in one box here, and it comes with a lot of different size um, plates for the grinding, and it comes with a couple different blades and stuff. And I'm not going to try them all today. I'm just going to try the one 8 millimeter plate. The first thing you have to do when you get one of these is you have to take and do, give it a really good hand washing with some hot soapy water and get it all cleaned up. And you know, you never know if there's manufacturing oils on it or anything, but it cleans up nice and pretty simple to put together. You got that auger that goes in there, and then there's a uh, blade that goes on with the, the flat side out, kind of the sharp edges out. And then you pick the plate that you want to use, and then there's just a ring that kind of snugs that up against the inside of the blade. And a little hopper up there to, to put your meat on. Now this goes into the end of the kitchen aid, just like that pasta maker did. And you just have to get it engaged in the, the square drive there. And then line it up and uh, tighten it down so that that little um, thumb screw is in the pin pinhole there. And this recipe calls for two pounds of chicken breast. And I've got about two and a half here, a little bit a little bit more. And I figure by the time I trim it and stuff, it'll be uh, good, good enough. And first thing I'm going to do is just cut it up to chunks that'll fit in down in that tube of the grinder there. Now this is chicken that was uh, we had frozen previously. So um, I'll show you later. It is a little bit moister than the, you know, just if you use fresh chicken. So I got the chicken cubed up there and uh, going to grind it up here. I've got the 8 millimeter plate on there. And uh, basically it really works good. You can see it uh, goes right through. doesn't really seem to put much of a strain on the mixer or anything. And it's not smelly like our old, the motor in our old uh, grinder was. And it's really, uh, you know, you can see here it really does work good. Um, now this is just with chicken. I will be using other, you know, other types of meat stuff in the future. But uh, for now you can see it, uh, you know, basically it's, a, you know, just like a standard grinder. And uh, it's going to be nice to have something that you can just use, you know, pull out and use and not have to drag a big machine out. So there you can see it's a, you know, it runs through uh, pretty fast. You put the mixer on for the fourth speed, it says, and that's what I did. So, um, you know, it does, does do a good job. And we do buy, you know, all kinds of beef and chunks and stuff and grind it up on our own for different recipes. So this will be nice to be able to just do, you know, a little bit of a recipe at a time and not have to grind up a ton of it and freeze it. So once you're done, uh, it comes right out, everything comes apart, and there's a little bit of meat left. Uh, you can see a little bit of chicken meat left in the, the hopper there, and the thing gets caught back there. But that seems to be about the exact same amount that we had in our last grinder. So, you know, it's really not that much difference. So now um, I'm going to get all the spices out for this recipe. And it turns out I think it's the most spices I've ever used in any single recipe. So it's real handy having everything in the spice rack where it's just at eye level. You can just, you know, pick out what you need and uh, not have to dig through stuff looking for it. And I did have to buy a thing called rub sage. I'd never heard of that before. 
And there's a maple syrup that came out of my trees in the backyard a couple months ago. And some parsley and onion and garlic and peppers and nutmeg and um, Himalayan pink salt. So I'm going to start out by, uh, you know, putting the stuff in that the recipe calls for. First, it calls for three tablespoons of a maple syrup. And this is a syrup that, that I made, and it's, it's really good. This should be really good flavor for the sausage. That's kind of why I tried this recipe. I was looking for something to, you know, use a little bit of the syrup up in. And then two tablespoons of a Himalayan tea, teaspoons of a Himalayan pink salt. I mean, and uh, I guess you could substitute other salts, but we do use a lot of this, so we did have it. And then you have two teaspoons of rubbed sage. Now, I never knew what rubbed sage was before I printed out this recipe. And uh, actually, I couldn't find it at our local Amish store, so I had to order this little bottle of it on Amazon. It turns out it's like a real fluffy type sage where they supposedly they rub the leaves together, I think, instead of grinding it. And it gives it more flavor. But it does really smell great, and, uh, you know, it is real fluffy. And then we got some uh, one and a half teaspoons of a dried parsley. This is the parsley from our garden last year, and can't wait till we have fresh again pretty soon. But you know, for now, we gotta use what we've got. That's the parsley in there, and then next thing is uh, one teaspoon of garlic powder. Now, if I did it again, I'd cut this back probably in half. Because it was the garlic was a little bit strong for me. I mean, some people like it like that, but for breakfast sausage, I would uh, definitely go lighter on the garlic next time. And then there was a um, one teaspoon of an onion powder, and it just adds a little bit of onion flavor to it. It's really starting to smell good in the kitchen too. And then next it called for a teaspoon of black pepper. And I don't have any pre-ground pepper, so I'm just going to take the grinder and, uh, you know, grind what I feel is about a teaspoon's worth in there. And then it called for some dried thyme. So I'm just going to put in a half teaspoon of dried thyme that they ask for. And then some red pepper flakes. Here's a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And uh, they did add a nice little, little tiny bit of uh, flavor to it. I could have used a little bit more of them, I think. And then there's some uh, and a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. And you definitely could taste that a little bit with the uh, maple syrup in there. And then it said a pinch of ground clove. So I'm just going to grab onto a pinch. And that's basically it. That's the most spices I've ever put in one bowl at any time, I think. And uh, there it is. Looks like that. My wife threatened me I better clean up after myself this time. So I'm putting everything away. And um, that vacuum sealer for the jars, we love that thing. This is the wide mouth one. And we've used that like thousands of times and it's worked perfect every time so that's a really good thing to have for things like this uh, pink salt that you want you don't want any moisture to get into so you just pull a vacuum on it and it's good you know it's good no matter what you can stick the jar under water now and still be good so now it's time to mix it up and this is where I could feel was a little bit too bushy to, um, I should have probably listened to my wife and used fresh chicken breast but we had the chicken in the freezer so I decided I was going to use that but somehow when you grind the frozen stuff it actually it's easier to cut up and grind but it um, comes out a little bit softer and once you throw all that syrup in there and stuff it really did make it kind of soft and gooey you can see there. So I really can't make the patties out of it that I want to right now. So what I'm going to do is just, I put some wax paper on a cookie sheet. And I'm just going to make the patties up the best I can and put them on the wax paper. 
And then I'm going to take this whole thing and throw it down in the freezer for an hour and just let them firm up so that I can handle them and cook them without falling apart. And it sure does smell good in here. Um, it really, uh, you know, it really does have a pretty neat smell. So that's all the patties I got from it. They're, none of them are identical in size or anything, but, you know, I think they'll cook down pretty close. And I did clean up everything and put it away, and it didn't take long to clean up. They give you a little brush for cleaning out everything and, you know, washing it up. So I can't wait to try to, you know, stuffing some sausages into casings and stuff and try the hamburger press and the other some of the other cutters. But the good thing about it is that we can just, uh, you know, put it right back in this little box that came, came in and put it in the closet on the shelf and it won't take up much room so my wife is real happy about that and it's light so she can pick it up without having to move a big uh, machine it does come with a one year warranty it said so this is an hour later I let the patty sit for an hour in the freezer and I'm gonna just fry them up um, put a little bit, couple drops of olive oil in the bottom of the pan because I figured with maple syrup I was gonna have a, a problem and Brought them up from the freezer, and they did get firm enough that I could handle them and, you know, pick them up with spatula without damaging them. So, they do uh, look and smell pretty good right now. So, they, uh, I'm just frying up uh, patties this size to make sandwiches out of. We're going to use them for, like, egg sandwiches and stuff like that over the next couple of days, so... You can stuff this in casings, or you can make different sizes, or, you know, whatever you want with it. But this is what I decide to go with. So, fried them up. Um, and there you can see some of the maple syrup coming out of it, sticking to the pan. So, you know, that does make kind of a, a mess, and it does uh, add a little bit of burning smell. But at least I didn't set off the smoke a lot. Yeah, there it is. You can see the, the maple syrup. And then, you know, as with any kind of sausage, I always check the temperature. And with the chicken, you want it to be at least, uh, I guess it's 165 minimum. So I'll go for 165. And that one there is done, but the, the other one need a couple more minutes. So came another minute and a half or so, and everything was fine and cooked and, you know, basically ready to come off. They sure do smell good right about now. I wish you could. They made a smell vision. So there's the first batch, and I thought I'd just throw the second batch in, but nope. I got to clean the pan up here. Got to clean the pan up to start over with a little bit more olive oil, and you know, same thing. I'm just gonna throw the second batch in now and fry it up while I got the pan out. So um, I got out some English muffins there. We get these big packs at Costco, and they turn out, you know, really cheap at Costco compared to anywhere else. They're going to make some sandwiches out of them. And the same thing, uh, you can see this uh, bottom of the pan getting a little sticky and burned there. But, uh, you know, sausages are cooking up fine, and they really do smell great. And there's the mess I wound up with when they were done. So that's what they look like, and uh, we're going to make some sandwiches. My wife decided she wanted a over-easy egg on hers, and I just wanted mine with a little bit of maple syrup on it on an English muffin like that to make a plain sandwich. And there's her egg sandwich here. So, you know, they really did come out good, and we really did enjoy them. Glad I liked them because I'll be eating them for the next couple days now, but they were really good. So it, it turned out good, and you know, this machine did really, um, this attachment did really work good and really happy the way it worked and how easy it was to clean up and stuff. So, you know, I definitely uh, recommend it. And I'll put a link to that in the description along with a link to the page if you want to get a print out of this recipe. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.